Attention please. This uploading is only for educational purpose. No intention to infringe copyrights. Learning English with subtitles G. Pitchell. Follow us. This time on Monkey Life, an unexpected arrival is on the way at the Golden Cheeked Gibbon House and it's causing concern. There is no sign of um, that baby coming out naturally and have actually called out the vet and we're just waiting on him. A female from France fails to charm ageing Saki monkey Jethro. Jethro doesn't seem that bothered, to be honest. But the care team are optimistic. Hopefully they'll just get more and more used to each other as the days pass. And it's all gone nuts in the capuchin enclosure. Monkey Life, audio described by Kieran McLaughlin. Shots of various primates, chimps, lemurs, gibbons and orangutans. Monkey World in Dorset, buried deep in the English countryside, is the largest sanctuary of its kind on the planet. The team, led by Dr. Alison Cronin, rescue and rehabilitate abused and unwanted primates from all over the world. It smells a bit macaque in there, but yeah, we're good. The park provides a home for more than 250 monkeys and apes from 20 different species. A saki monkey scurries across a branch. An orangutan plays with a bucket of soap suds. A chimp and baby nearly take a tumble from a climbing hose. All the primates in the park enjoy the companionship of their own kind, and many close relationships are formed. Woolly monkeys and chimps are featured. None more so than golden-cheeked gibbons Kim and Tien. They're totally loved up. Put together as young gibbons just two years ago, they bonded quickly. Now they're rarely out of each other's reach and are often found snuggled up together. They will usually um, hug when they're just sitting up in the trees. They will hug when they're sitting waiting for their dinner. They will hug in the morning when they're watching up the hill for us to come down with breakfast. They are an incredibly close couple and usually having some kind of physical contact. Because Monkey World is a rescue centre, most of the female primates are given contraception to control breeding. But recently, keepers began to suspect Kim might be pregnant and did a test. The result was negative. But this morning, the team arrived to find Kim curled up on her own, hugging her tummy and showing signs of distress. Straight away, it was very obvious that Kim wasn't quite herself. She was lying down on top of the radiator and she was stretched out and just looking in a very uncomfortable position and clearly not very happy. Testing gibbons to see if they're pregnant isn't easy and it's notoriously difficult to get accurate results. So the keepers kept a watchful eye on the young gibbon. And now Kim's unusual behavior this morning and the way her stomach is contracting has led the care team to believe she's definitely pregnant and what's more could be about to have the baby. We're hoping what we're seeing right now is Kim going through the early stages of labor and we're gonna let nature run its course and obviously try to not intervene or give her any stress or anything. Just keep quiet and keep a close eye on her over the next couple of the hours. Hopefully later on today we will see a little baby um, and a very happy Kim. Kim lies on her side in a corner of the covered enclosure. Another primate at the park who could do with a little love and companionship is elderly Saki monkey Jethro. And today he's in for a big surprise. Jethro is a 26-year-old white-faced male Saki monkey. He was hand-reared and lived as a pet until four years ago when he arrived at the park. Since then, he's had company, but not of his own kind. And nowadays, he shares an enclosure with the squirrel monkeys. Jethro sits on a branch with a squirrel monkey nearby. Jethro is an extremely popular pensioner at the park, with a gentle nature, but he likes to keep himself to himself. He peers round his enclosure. He spent a long time living with humans, but he does have some natural Saki behaviors. He knows how to flirt, which Saki monkeys do by flicking their tongues, and it's hoped he may use his moves on a new companion. He flicks his tongue. What he doesn't know is that Alison has been working hard to find him one, and she's on her way. 
We actually have a new arrival at the park today. Um, her name is Chloe and she's a white-faced Saki monkey and hopefully she's going to be a new friend for Jethro. Unlike the males, females are brown. Chloe has arrived from a zoo in France where she was living with a group of young Sarkis. She's also in her 20s and it's hoped Jethro and Chloe will live out their twilight years together. It's going to be a life-changing day for Jethro. He sits perched on a branch. He hasn't lived with another female Saki in quite a few years um, since his sister died when he was still being kept as a pet. So we're not really sure what he's going to do. He is quite human-focused, so he might not really pay her a lot of attention, um, or he might have um, missed Saki uh, company quite a lot. So in, in that case, he'd be really interested in her. There we go. There you go, baby. Let go. That's it. Come out. Chloe exits her travel crate. Oh, hello. Hi there. Before being introduced, the team place the pair in adjacent bedrooms so they can see, smell, and hear each other. Jethro is a quiet and gentle geriatric, and the team feel he's more likely to be bemused than aggressive when they meet. Luckily, it seems Chloe's a pretty laid-back lady, and the prospects for friendship look hopeful. But introductions are a serious business, so they take place in the bedrooms where the team can easily intervene if necessary. She's pretty calm and chilled out. I don't think she's panicked in any way. She isn't, but she has spotted Jethro. She's already showing lots of interest in, in him. When we walked her in, in the crate, she was at the front of the crate looking at him straight away. And there is um, clear perspex between the two rooms. Um, but it's clear perspex that she has been able to see him and she has been watching him already. So she knows he's there and she looks quite eager to meet him. And with Jethro looking calm and mellow about the whole business, the team decide they can meet. A partition is pulled to one side. Chloe walks very slowly and cautiously into Jethro's room. The first thing she does is go over to introduce herself. But Chloe might be a little too forward for him. After all, it's been a long time since he's had a lady friend. I thought he was a bit confused, maybe, by her. Um, he's, he's moving away from her a bit, but she seems very keen on him and is following him around and, and sniffing at him. So yeah, it's going really well so far. Just need Jethro to realise that she's actually just going to be a friend and not to be not to be wary of her. Having been slightly rebuffed, Chloe sets off to explore her surroundings and is pretty confident despite the new environment. She's been all the way around um, and knows where everything is, so she seems quite content. Jethro, meanwhile, is scent marking, rubbing his neck on the branches to show it's his territory. Although not aggressive, he's not used to sharing his space and wants the new arrival to know exactly whose territory this is. Despite him trying to guard his patch, Chloe isn't bothered, and as far as she's concerned, this is her new home. Jethro doesn't seem that bothered, to be honest. Um, he's quite happy with her just being in the room with him. Hopefully, they'll just get more and more used to each other as the days pass. An aerial view of the capuchin enclosure. Over in Franco's capuchin group, it's going to be a morning of monkey puzzles. Most of this group are youngsters, and since they were rescued from laboratory cages in Chile in 2008, they've grown up a lot. A capuchin enjoys a snack. Others move round the climbing frame. They've learned great moves and many natural foraging skills. Today, they've been given two puzzling treats, nuts in their shells and frozen mango. With a paw, a capuchin pushes a segment of mango down on the climbing frame planks. Capuchins are clever. In the wild, they smash open shellfish, but frozen mango just won't crack. A capuchin bangs and rubs the mango against a horizontal log. Picking bits off is the answer. One detaches a segment of mango with its fingers. Then a capuchin holds two nuts. 
Fabian knows to crack this problem, he's going to need a bit of peace and quiet. He vanishes out of sight round a corner of the frame. Marcy tries the tooth cracker approach, cleverly turning the knot to find weak spots. William opts for brute force, repeatedly bashing the nut on the wooden beam. But Eliza hasn't quite got the hang of this yet. She won't get anywhere hitting her nut on a rubber hose. But clever Frida is working on the theory it takes a nut to crack a nut and is hitting hers against the metal nuts and bolts of the climbing frame. Finding one isn't enough, she tries all three in the pipe shelter. And she's in. For Franco, a laid-back, relaxed approach has brought rewards. He picks the flesh from the shell of the shattered nut. But some of his friends are finding the whole thing very frustrating. One of the capuchins tries to crack a nut with its teeth. Then a nut floats on the surface of a pond. The last puzzle is in the pond. Capuchins don't swim, so how does a hungry monkey get to a floating nut? Franco plays the waiting game. He patrols the edge of the pond. Till it drifts into range. He darts out a paw, snatches the floating nut and makes off with it. But Frida loses patience and pushes hers away by mistake. For youngest lad Fabian, it's mission impossible. So he hops down to prove the youngest can be the cleverest capuchin of all. He manoeuvres a partially submerged section of branch close to the nut, then scrambles onto it and grabs his prize. End of part one.